Mica Moon Rocks is a new product for me. My first time using them on this piece and I think they're stunning. I loved how they worked and they really add a whole nother dimension. Check out those turquoise colors. I'll tell you where you can find them and you can do it too. Welcome back to Moon Cusser Art. This is Janet and these are some of the products I pulled off the shelf to start a geode piece today. I'm featuring the Moon Rocks. It's that beautiful bag of turquoise. So this is my secret weapon for doing my geode piece. This is the, um, this is called Moon Rocks and I got these from Color Art and I've never used anything like this in creating a resin uh, geode piece. So I'm excited to give these a try. Now the piece that I'm going to be working on is only going to be a 12 by 12 so it's rather small and you can see that some of these chunks in here are a little on the big side. So I want to reduce the size on some of those. Let's get in here and pour a little bit out here on the tabletop. This one is called uh, Tide Pool. So I'm uh, going to be working in Caribbean colors, uh, you know, teals and stuff like that. So I want to make these a little bit smaller so that I can fill in my areas. And I thought maybe I could try making them a little smaller with a couple of different things. I want to try scissors first and, you know, just chop them up a little bit. They, they are flaking up a little as I do these cuts. Um, the only thing that I can see that I'm not going to like about it is the potential for more geometric size shapes. So I'm going to try to just be random in my cut lines to avoid that happening. All right, that seemed to work okay. Now this one here, it's a little bit on the thick side and I don't know that I want it to be quite that thick. And when I break it apart, you can see, I think you can see, let me get that in front of the camera. Come on camera, will you focus for me? Here we go. See that that one is very silver in its color, but that's okay because the combination color that I'm going to be using is silver. So that works out nicely. I don't want everything to be uniform, which was one of the things that interested me about these. So I'm just going to go through and break some of these apart get them in a little bit smaller shapes, actually flexing it and breaking it with my gloved fingers seems to be working very nicely to break those open. So we just go like that. Yep. All right. That works good. I like it. All right, so I'm just going to keep going through and doing that and getting these ready to put on the geode piece. That looks good for now. Let's see if the camera will zoom in there. All right, so I've got a nice little stash there and I'll probably make a little bit more. Um, actually, it looks like it might be enough. So those are ready to go. Let me get my canvas prepped and we'll start looking at that. Okay, these are my crushed up moon rocks and I didn't get crazy on making them 
really itty bitty because I don't want them to be itty bitty. I want to have a texture. So underneath them, I'm going to be painting with, a, this is a tube of acrylic paint from Michael's Artist Loft, and it's a metallic. I believe they call it metallic cobalt blue, and it just looks turquoise to me. So I, who knows why they call it cobalt blue, but okay. And I'm just going to paint that on there real quick. My uh, MDF board has been prepped. I spray painted the surface white and also the sides and you might be able to spot. I'm going to do clean sides. So I've got a band of my wonderful tape on the edges. And now I'm going to use my blow dryer and I'm going to make sure that that acrylic paint is nice and dry. I did let it sit for about an hour. It is a very thin layer of paint on there, but again, it's just to make a background for those moon rocks. So letting it dry up nice. All right, the acrylic paint is all dry and now I'm gonna come with the Pebeo CERN Relief. In the past, I've used Elmer's glue and you know they have the little applicator tip on the bottle. So I've used that to create a dam edge. But I had the Pebeo CERN Relief in inventory, so I thought I'd give it a try. I did use, there was another color I had silver. I was going to try that, but that one got too old and dried up in the tube. But thankfully, I had this transparent. So it's got a nice applicator tip, and it works really well to get a fine line. Okay, I have batched up two and a half ounces of the epoxy resins general use resin and I've got my moon rocks sitting in a cup ready to go and the acrylic paint is all dry and also the CERN relief but I wanted to get you in close so you can see it's been about an mm, hour and a half. I had lunch time and uh, worked out good timing. It has dried very clear, so I'm not concerned that that little dam that I built up there is going to show up. But we're all set to start adding those moon rocks. It has been about 15 minutes since I batched up my resin, and I've moved it over into a paper cut. That way I can pinch the and make a spout, and I can make sure that I get it exactly where I want it. I'm going to use a pop stick here and move that resin right up to the edge of that dam that I made out of the Pebeo CERN Relief. I'm just going to fill in the whole area. Make sure I get it right up to those edges. And what's nice about the resin from the epoxy resin store it's a very thin resin and if you want to get it a little bit thicker you just let it sit and you got to watch it this is a small amount so it's not going to heat up and now i'm going to start mixing up one of my colors this is from color art it is their bling it and this is their true silver and i'm being heavy-handed i want it to be very silver um, so put a lot in there stir it up it just blends right in and again i'm going to move it over into a paper cup so that i can create a pinch pour spout and i'm just going to start doing a random pour on my board i don't have any planned idea on how this is going to go ahead so i'm just going to start creating some geo designs and I want this to be the background for the crushed glass that I'm going to be adding. So I'm just spreading that around. It does not have to be a thick puddle at all. It can be, you know, just average depth. And again, thinning it out with the pop stick to a consistency that I think will work good to grab onto that crushed glass. Pop the bubbles out with my heat gun. And let's start adding the pieces of crushed glass. So I just got a plastic spoon there. It works well to get it out of the bag. I'm using the crushed glass that I have here. It's a vase filler that you can buy at Michael's. And it comes in several different colors. This is their silver color. Just going to add that in there. 
and then I'll start to drop in a few of these quartz crystal points. Well now I've made a mess so I gotta clean up my mess and I'm just gonna use my fingertips or whatever I can do. I'm just gonna push these pieces of glass right into the areas that I want it and just kind of sweep it out of my way. Now I'm using a popsicle stick. Just moving it into those piles. Quick and easy. Just like that. Alright, it's been a time uh, on the resin of about 45 minutes at this point. So now I'm going to start adding the chips of these moon rocks, the mica moon rocks. And I'm just going to, it's kind of like doing a mosaic, you know, I'm just trying to fit them in as best I can. Sorry about my big fat hand getting in the way of your view. But I'm just going to pick them out of my little cup there and start laying them down and filling them in, like making a yellow brick road, except for it's the little blue road. And I'm just going to keep filling those in. I have some large pieces, smaller pieces, so I'm trying to vary them. And it's a little bit, yeah, you know, it's kind of time consuming, but I'm figuring it's going to be well worth the effort. So I put you on some time lapse here, speed things up a little bit better for you. So again, just filling in. I'm okay if it overflows the side a little bit there. You know, some of the pieces are going to hang over the edge. It's it's not perfect, and, and I don't want anything to ever be perfect, you know. I, I can be a perfectionist at times, but when it comes to stuff like that, I think that having a little bit of variation is important to be able to see. Um, you know, I'm not a machine. I am an artist and I'm creating and I'm also trying to have some fun. All right, and I'm working right up to the edge there. The tape dam is holding everything back nicely for me, so I love doing that. And then I have a little bit of the smaller pieces are sitting in the bottom of the cup, so I'm just going around and sprinkling those in. And then I'm going to use a brush and sweep it right up into those spots to get it cleaned up and I had a few more of the crystals left so I'm going to add a little bit more of the silver resin here in the center and then I'll drop in a couple more of the crystals. You probably noticed when I was putting that silver in the center how much the resin has slowed down at this point. Again it's at about an hour that I've been working with it. So now I can actually make these points stand up slightly. I support them with some of the crushed glass underneath it and arrange them carefully. And this one, whoops, it's strung beads. So I noticed that I had it backwards and I could see the holes that they were strung by. So take it out of there, clean it up with some alcohol and back in it goes. Looking pretty good. One more point and we'll stand it up right here. Perfect. And doing the same process, we're just going to drop a couple more into these other puddles of crushed glass. Just a little bit of accent to those. I got them, so why not? Okay, I batched up another two and a half ounces of resin. And I let it sit for about mm, 10 minutes, I think. Just to let it get a little bit on the thicker side. And I'm using the Bling It True Silver again. Liked it before, liking it now. So I'm just outlining and I'm gonna just pour around those moon stones, the moon rocks, and outline it with that silver. And it flows very nicely. Now this next color that I'm adding again, it's from Color Art. It's their resin art series and it's also their luster series and this is aquamarine it's got a nice turquoise tint to it but it's got a little bit more of on the green side so it's picking up nicely off of those crystals that i've set in there and we're just going to ring the other glass sections with it and that'll give it a nice pop 
And now I'm going to ring it with a white. And this is actually from Aztec. This is their opaque white airbrush paint. And it works really nice in resin. Now at this point, I took a little break from pouring rings and I had batched up again another two and a half ounces of resin. This color that I'm pouring now is again from Color Art. It's their Resin Art series and the Luster series. And that is Mermaid. She's a beauty. It's got a really nice sheen to it and a really rich dark teal in there. It's just stunning. Love it. First time using it and I love that color. Fabulous. All right, and I'm going to come back and add another ring of the white. Again, it's the same white, the Aztec airbrush paint, their opaque white. And it gives some pretty cool effects, so try that one out too. And you can see I'm just alternating back and forth with colors. Again, adding some more of that mermaid that I like so much. And there you go. And then we're going to switch back over to the white. Now the, doing that, it helps to get effects and add some interest in your pieces. And uh, it's going to keep moving and changing on me too. So finish that white. Now here I'm adding in another color. This is Artie Sue. Uh, this is teal. It's their epoxy pigment teal. And it's not a very transparent uh, color but it does have some transparencies. I only used a really tiny amount of pigment and I also added um, some glitter. It's a uh, hexagon shake chunk, kind of a chunkier glitter and it matches the color very nicely so you can see those twinkling in through there. And we're just going to fill those fields up at this point now. Putting in lots of the teal color. Leaving a few spaces here and there. There you can really see that glitter. Alright, and once I've used up that dark teal, I'm going to fill in those spots. Again, this is the aquamarine from resin art color art and then i have one little spot i'll fill in some white over there and that uses up all my resin and then i'm coming back here about an hour later i've let the resin sit and it starts to thicken even more so now i'm going to pull off my tape dam and it's important if you want a rolled over edge. This is the big tip, guys. Rolled over edge. You want to come back, pull off that tape dam, and it's going to allow it to move nicely. Now I got a little bit of my shield to come off there, but I fixed that. And now I come in with the heat gun, and I'm just warming those edges again with the heat gun and that lets them round over really nicely. You can see a little bit drip over the edge. And that's exactly what you want. Then we're going to put the cover on and say goodnight and keep the dust off. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. Okay, it's the next day. What do you guys think? It's looking pretty good. I love the colors of this piece. I like to use CraftSmart markers. These are a oil-based marker. Um, I've had them for a very long time and you might notice that I'm struggling a little bit. I'm laying down a line of silver and the silver is just about spent. <laughs> so I have to go back over and emphasize it a little bit, but it's not a problem. I'm making sure that I'm not resting my hand where I have drawn in the lines already. And there's no rhyme or reason. You just kind of move around and put them where you want. I use three colors from them using their medium tip. I have the silver, a metallic green that I used, and their white. And I also used a very fine tip marker of the white just to add a little bit, very thin line details. 
So you can see how adding the lines really changes the look of the piece. It definitely gives it more of that geode look. And again, you just kind of put them in wherever you feel like you want them. And I'll tell you what, those moon rocks, they're really looking good. I'm very pleased at how they dried in their positions in the resin. And we'll be adding our clear coat. It's good to do that over top of the marker. Okay, I've brought the artwork back to the resin table and I batched up 10 ounces of the Epoxy Resin Store's general use resin. Let it sit for 10 minutes and then I started to pour. I started adding over top of the moon rocks and then went over the crushed glass because I want to make sure I get good coverage there. Torching the bubbles as I go and working it all around. You can see I have a tape dam that's holding it in place and I'll remove that shortly. Good morning everybody. I'm downstairs in my studio and the geode was tucked away into this plastic box overnight and there it is. It is looking good. Now I had that tape dam around it to try to contain the resin on top, let it kind of set up and thicken before I took it off, and that way it would preserve more on top. But uh, apparently it, it worked its way underneath my tape because I, this is, I'll show you, this uh, tape on the sides was there before, and the drips from the last pour were also on the tape, and as good as I tried, I didn't quite get uh, it to stick down tight in this area. So you can see here on my paper that I had a really big flood over here. I came to pull the tape off, and a flood was already happening in this corner. So um, I had wanted to wait for 45 minutes before I took the tape off, but when I came down to check on it, it was only 30 minutes and all that was going on. So I scrambled and uh, went ahead. I didn't record it and just pulled that tape dam off and then allowed the extra resin to flow off. So there she is looking mighty beautiful. So what we're gonna do this morning is we need to get this tape edge off the side so that you know, what you want to do is you want to get it off quickly. You don't want to wait too long because the longer you wait, the harder the resin gets and the harder getting the tape dam or not dam, the taped sides can be. So let's do that now. And I'm going to uh, change the camera angle so that I can get a little bit better view of what I'm doing on this. So let me get that set up and we'll get that tape off. I have my Wagner heat gun ready to go. This is the Ferno 500. I'm not sure, I don't know, but I don't know that you can get the Wagner 500 anymore. I think they did away with that model number. But what I like about my heat gun, whether it's, you know, whatever brand you use, I always recommend looking for one that has multiple settings. So this one, you can see here, there's a little freeze, a little snowflake there. That means it turns blue when I when I go to do a shut off, and that means it's cooling down because this gets extremely hot when it's on. So the for safety reasons, they have a cool down cycle to cool that tip down. It's just gonna blow cool air through there and help to get that cooled down so that you don't burn yourself. You can see I love my heat gun. I I've dipped it right into my resin and it's scorched black now. Anyway, but it also has multiple settings. This is for the fan speed, so I can actually change the fan speeds through here, having it blow uh, slow or fast. And here are for the heat settings. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different levels of heat. Obviously, the smallest box indicates the lowest heat setting and then I would put it on the lowest fan setting. So it's it's nice because it has variable heat and speed, which is important, especially when you're working with resin. But for today, I'm using this to get that tape off. So what I like to do is 
This heat gun also has a setup so I can just make it stand beautiful like that. And then I can pass my piece over top of the heat and warm it up. And what that does is it warms up your resin just a little bit. You don't want to hold it for too long in place. It's just going to warm it up and that's going to allow me to pull the uh, tape right off the side. So let's get going. all the tape is off and I have one little spot where the tape you know when you're doing a corner they can be a little bit tricky and because I was using a thin tape it bends a lot more it like flexes so your line doesn't stay really straight and when I was wrapping that corner apparently that's what happened and so I got a little tiny bit of seepage under here from when I poured the turquoise layer. So I'm going to need to do a little bit of a repair to that. But otherwise, gorgeous, clean sides. Love that. So my, uh, you know, my trouble is going to be your benefit. I'm going to show you what I do to fix that. All right. So let's do a little repair. All right, so I'm gonna tackle my repair on the spot right there. That little leakage I got from my resin getting underneath my tape. So, where is it? There it is. I have a small piece of, this is 220 sandpaper. And I'm going to just Sand this down real quick, doesn't take long at all. Because I, if I don't get this off, there's going to be a blemish underneath the, the paint that I'm going to put on here to do the repair. So I want to get it smooth again. Just like that, I can feel it with my finger. Nasty yeah, finger now. So just scuff that up a little bit. And then here on this corner as well, on this side, just scuff it up. You know, there's nothing worse when you're looking to have a nice, smooth, clean edge than to see a blemish. Um, you know, it would bother me. That's my OCD coming through loud and clear. So there we go. Let's get that. Nice and smooth, just like that. All right, and then, because I have dusty fingers now, wipe them off in my towel, and I need to wipe the dust off of this area here. Here it goes, clean as a whistle. Not getting any residue on my fingers, so that's good. Got a little bit of sand on my tabletop, so wipe that away as well. And on my sides, I had spray painted them with the Rust-Oleum Two Times Ultra Cover. This is a semi-gloss, so it's not very shiny, just a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, this one is the 334098 semi-gloss white. And uh, we're just going to um, take this outside because 
spray paint not gonna work inside so let's head out the doors uh, before forgot before I take this outside so I have a piece of this is just a piece of freezer paper it has wax on one side paper on the other side I don't know actually this may not be wax it feels like wax paper on this side but you can see it's got a shiny finish to it this side is dull and so this is the corner that I'm going to touch up. And what I'm going to do is this paper is going to create a blind over top of my piece. I'm going to use my, my love, my handy dandy 3M scotch tape. And I'm going to just tape that very, very carefully along that edge. So... I'm not even going to try to film it. I'll show you after I've got it attached what it looks like. But I need to create a blind to protect my beautiful baby there. All right. So let me uh, get that on there. my corner there's my tape edge I burnished it down tight and I don't have to worry about the back side because I'm only gonna be touching up this corner so the spray is going to come at it from this corner and it'll fan out it's just gonna take a real quick little touch but this yes I'm going outdoors now side to let it dry so this is the corner and it looks perfect so we can take the mask off There it is. Perfect again. All right, let's go outside and get some pictures. Well, here it is, aquamarine geode. This piece is just spectacular. I gotta say, these mica moon rocks from Color Art are just so interesting. I never saw anything like them before, and I loved using them. Very easy to place on the board, and boy, do they show off nicely. I like how it gives a whole nother effect and degree of interest. The crushed glass really sets off those aquamarine crystal points and also the colors, the teals, the aquamarine, and that mermaid from color art. Wow, fabulous. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and please don't forget to subscribe, hit the button. That way you'll be notified when I put out some new videos and here's a couple of new ones for you to check out. See you next time on Mooncusser Art.